servant leadership, where did you yep. learn this? Did, did you have a boss that influenced you or did you read a book or how did you end up? And I'm familiar with the term and I like it. How did you end up there? Oh, great question. So without saying names, because I'm just out of respect for them, it, it, it came from a couple of places. First things first, I want to thank, If uh, are we allowed to really use swear words on here? Like, I don't want to swear, but so listen. Not yourself. I've, I mean, Canadians do swear a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've had really shitty bosses along the way on this journey. <laughs> I've had a lot of good ones, but I've had more shitty ones, let me tell you. So I always, what a great question. I always remember early on in my career when we had, an, and it's not to say, not to be cynical, because like I said, you know, it's the old adage of they're just focused on results. I don't care how we get there. Let's just get there. What, what, what a shitty mentality. We will get there, but let's work on the process. Anyway, I've had really shitty bosses. And along the way, I've always told myself, you know, based on my, my morals, my moral compass, you know, and what I've seen in my mom. And I've always said, if ever I'm in a position of power throughout this journey, if ever I have the opportunity to be responsible for people, at least now I know how not to do it. So that was one of the biggest lessons is, is just day to day, right? So thank you for all my shitty bosses, actually. I thank them a lot. Number two, I had two really, really great mentors in this business. Really, really good mentors and not just mentors, but leaders. All too often, a lot of people have the titles of managers, right? And managers are important. Don't get me wrong, right? But when you become a leader, you really cross that threshold, you know, and a lot of managers, unfortunately, they were given a title, not a crown, right? So they, they oh, I'm the manager. So they rule with the iron fist. I think, Sean, that's the difference between demanding respect and commanding respect. I mean, if you're a manager and you need to follow me, look at my title, I got the big, biggest business card in the place, you're demanding that they respect you. But Correct. you're not necessarily earning it, or that's what I would call commanding it. If you're commanding Correct. respect, you don't have to ask for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, I heard this saying, it's not mine, but the minute I heard it, I believe it was Simon Sinek, but I just, and we'll get into the books after, but managers do things right. Leaders do the right things. And I had to read that over and over and over. And it really, truly made sense. And it kept me humble. So on top of, so one, shitty managers helped me out. Two, I had two really, really good mentors. And three, as you said before, yeah, books, books. It's so important. Reading is so important for me anyway. I am a spiritual person, but not, not, in, the, not in the weird sense, but spiritual in the sense of really knowing myself and really knowing my triggers and how I could get to the next level, continuous improvement. So some of the books that have really, really helped me, there was uh, Simon Sinek. I mean, I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan. James Clear, Atomic Habits. That's the one I'm reading right now. Fantastic book. There was Daniel Goleman, Emotional Intelligence. That one was really, really helped me really understand people and really understand that, you know, I am not response as a leader for me personally, I am not responsible for the results with where I am right now in my career. I'm responsible for the people that are responsible for the results. And when you really break that down, it comes down to processes. And if we're emotional beings, why are we not, why are, why aren't top leaders or servant leaders? Why are they not learning about emotional intelligence? Why are they not learning about empathy? You know, everything is about how to close the deal, how to close that sale, results, 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 you know, which are very important, like I said before, but at the same time, learning about people is, is even more important. You know, Stephen Covey, another great person I've been following, absolutely amazing. The Seven Habits of Highly uh, Effective People. What yes. a great book. And that, that's a book, I think I read that thing five times, you know? So I, I keep going back to these reference points and I just make sure that I'm constantly learning. You'd mentioned some great books. I love the emotional intelligence book and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I've probably been using seven habits since before you started in the business. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. When I look at his YouTube videos, I was like, damn, I wasn't even born. <laughs> well, my, my favorite part of, I mean, there's, there's a lot of great, I mean, seek first to understand before Correct. wanting yeah. to be understood. What's your favorite habit? 
my, my favorite part of seven habits actually is the four quadrants, the mm -hmm. important, but not urgent, urgent, but not yes. important, right? Neither right. urgent nor important. And I like to use that with my family and with my staff mm -hmm. because I, and put first things first, but it, I find that sometimes people react to the, they make things that are important, urgent when they don't need to be urgent. So here's what I mean, or what Stephen Covey meant. A baby crying. I have a four month old daughter. So yeah, congratulations, by the way. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. And you know, we're about the same age. So, you know, I'm <laughs> suggesting that you and you might want to try a new one also. But <laughs> the um, never done it. <laughs> when my baby's crying in day or middle of the night, that's urgent. I don't have another time that I can take care of her or respond to her. But I'll put that in important and urgent because it's also a baby and it could be some need, right? Uh, pain or needs to eat or something like that. When the phone rings or the doorbell rings, that's also urgent because there's not another time that you can answer a ringing phone and there's not another time that you can answer a ringing doorbell. But it's not necessarily important. It's just urgent. Correct. And then there's, of course important but not urgent so that's important but it doesn't mean it has to be dealt with now and people get urgency and importance confused at times Correct. and i think that people and workers i'm a worker someone with a job whether well home or work think that because it's important that it has to happen now but if you came to me and you said hey jeff there's this thing that's urgent because it's bothering you it actually could be a little self-indulgent because you just want to take care of it now but if you came to me and said, listen, when you're free, can you see me about this thing and not need to interrupt me now? Mm. It'll still be there then. And it really didn't matter if it was taken care of at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. Absolutely. It, and then, of course, there's the neither urgent nor important. And it doesn't mean that there can't be enjoyable things in life. But when you're planning your first things first in business so that you prioritize that, I really enjoyed that course. Yeah, and it's a great course. And for me, what stuck out, what's really helped me become, I guess, what I've been referred to as a, as a data scientist or a data scientist, however you want to say it, begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. That, oh man, that has just guided me. And it's what's basically brought me success in my career. And again, like we were talking about perception. No, I don't have a Ferrari outside. And no, I'm not like one of these YouTube stars that makes 100000 a month or I don't get 50,000 likes. To me in my life and my perception of it, that's not success. My success is doing this right now. Talking to Jeff Stearns, he started off four or five years ago as just some guy on the phone trying to pitch me, you know, his product. And it's become serious, sincerely a true friendship. This has been Jeff Stearns, Connected Through Cars.